In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your mechanical skills or a non-software based skill and help you get a career working in software or alternative sectors of the robotics industry. This was taken from a question that I got from the only video that you need in order to get a $100,000 AI job and it's from Carlos. So we're going to go through this question right now and then I'm going to walk you through my answer. And this is a multifaceted answer, but let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so I completely agree that it makes more sense to utilize the degree an individual engineer has for roles in the robotics industry that they're applying for. If you worked hard for the degree, why not allow the degree to work hard for you? And the scenario of the mechanical engineering wa engineer wanting to work as a software engineer without a computer science degree or with or a software engineering degree, what would be the best course of action to take if their self-reflection becomes more of a self-analysis, meaning the engineer realized their strengths and talents lie within the software space than mechanical. They find more joy coding for endless hours on end in comparison to designing in SolidWorks, running structural and thermal tests in ANSIs, and writing reports on Word. The desired role doesn't have to be in software engineering, it could be in any other discipline of robotics. Would you still recommend for an individual to use their degree and then laterally transition within a company to their desired role or apply the same principles from the video without the quote unquote proper degree that makes them competitive? Interested in your thoughts, thank you. All right, well, thank you, Carlos. And my answer to that is both and all of the above. So it's, it's always going to be better, faster, stronger to use your experience to move into your next role. Uh, just because you have leverage in that situation, we'll kind of walk through the different cases. The other piece is you do want to use the principles. And even if you quote unquote don't have the proper degree, you want to be able to p position yourself correctly. So what Carlos is talking about is in the video I, I mentioned at the very beginning here, um, this concept about leverage where if you, if you have a mechanical engineering degree, the fastest way to get into the industry is to use your background. It's going to be a lot harder to go into software engineering as a mechanical engineer just because you don't have the same context as the people that studied software engineering. And so what I wanted to do was show you this um, kind of roadmap here that I built. And you can get a link to this whiteboard below the video and go ahead and share this with a friend if you know that they need help with this and subscribe to the channel for more good content. So a mechanical engineer to a software engineer and some alternatives in robotics, I wanna kind of go through these three bullets here. So you wanna optimize for making money, which is the fastest. So you're optimizing for speed. Number two, you're optimizing for loving your work or your discipline. And then number three is optimizing for a mix of both. And there's going to be some trade-offs because you're trying to do an optimization on two things and inherently you're gonna have some trade-offs as a result. Now, some disclaimers before we dive into this. Basically, there are many correct paths. And I think in engineering, we forget that there is more than one correct way of doing things. There are more than one right answer. And you're gonna have the opportunity to kind of choose your adventure, right? You know, you don't want to spend a lot of time like trying to optimize for everybody else other than optimizing for yourself. So at the end of the day, you need to figure out, are you trying to optimize for money or are you trying to optimize for time? Because sometimes all of, just about all of the time and, and majority of the examples that I can think of, you're, you're, there's going to be a trade-off in time versus money, you know? So if you want to get a master's degree, you're going to be spending a lot of time and you're going to be spending a lot of money getting that, but you want to make sure that it, it makes sense for the scenario or the outcome that you want. And then my other biggest thing is decide and take action over perfection in engineering. And I work with a lot of engineers, like there's a lot of hesitation, like just make the decision, take action. And if it's the wrong decision, just make another decision. Like there's no harm in just making decisions, trying stuff, and then making another decision versus trying to, you know, psychoanalyze the perfect plan and then to come up with all of the things that could go wrong and do a full engineering analysis on your plan before having all of the data. So I'm always team take action and you'll, you'll figure out what you need to know as you, as you go through that process versus trying to plan for everything ahead of time. So let's go through all of these. So optimizing for making money is like gonna be like, you're optimizing for speed and you're optimizing for your career. 
And a lot of what we do at Learn Robotics and in my programs, this is where we live most of the time. Like we're trying, like a lot of the advice that I give people is helping them advance their careers. And inherently it's helping them earn more in what they do. And so when you come into a program like mine and you wanna completely do something different, it's gonna take you a whole lot longer and it just setting that expectation of like you wanting to push the boundaries of, of making a very different career move in the same amount of time, it's just a hard thing to, to do. And so that's why when I say like it's, it's easier, you know, to, to make that move from mechanical into mechanical and robotics versus mechanical to software and robotics, that's where that, that came from is we're, we're optimizing for speed and career advancement. And so in this situation, you want to use your degree and your background as credibility. And then this gives you leverage. So basically leverage is like you have experience, you have credibility, you have quote unquote case studies or examples of your work that makes you the right fit. And because of that, you're able to, you know, land that job a lot faster than somebody that doesn't otherwise have that experience. So it's like your unique experience and background can help speed up the process. There's also this concept of like an ROI on your degree or return on investment. Like let's say you spend 30K a year going to uh, engineering school. So that would be 120,000 for your engineering degree. If you go in, down the mechanical road and now you have this $120,000 expense, whether you paid for it out of pocket or you have student loans, the concept is like, we got to make this money back, you know, because we spent it, whether it's a loan or it, it came out of our pockets. There's this some level of this return on investment of your degree. Not only did you spend four years of your life doing this, you spent 30K a year. It's like, well, how soon can we get this money back by earning, you know, let's say 80 to $100,000 a year in the next role? And so that's something that you may want to consider as you're trying to figure out, well, which one of these categories makes the most sense for me and, and trying to figure out what I want to do. A lot of this document is like decision making concepts, you know, like if you have this situation, make this kind of decision. If you have that type of situation, you can think about this type of decision making process and then try it, take action. So the second piece is um, less about making money and more about loving what you do, which is where I think Carlos's question comes into play is like, I, I know that I just enjoy coding way more than doing the SolidWorks designs and doing that type of um, those types of projects. And so my, my comment to that is, is once you are aware of this, change your mind fast. Like, don't wait. Uh, there are folks that I've worked with in mentorship and in the programs where they do a bachelor's degree in, let's say, mechanical engineering. Then they think they need to do a master's degree in mechanical engineering, and they don't like mechanical engineering. And so then by the time they get to me, it's like, well, why did you decide to spend the last, you know, four to six to eight years doing something you knew you didn't want to do. Um, and just because you did the degree doesn't mean you have to do that for the rest of your life. The sooner you can cut ties with the thing you don't want to actually be doing, the better, because you'll save money on the tuition for the degree you didn't really want to do or the industry that you didn't really want to learn. And then you can, you can trade it for an opportunity that you actually like, you know, and you can actually focus on getting those skills. So if you are in a program, a bachelor's or a master's program, for mechanical engineering or really any engineering or any any subject that you're studying and you realize you know this isn't what you want to do with your life then make that decision sooner rather than later it's only going to help you and yeah it might feel difficult and yeah you might feel like you just threw a couple of years of your life away but that's way better than wasting you know you know four to eight years studying something you know you don't want to get into um, there's this concept called opportunity cost that I really wish engineering school would talk a little bit more about. It's basically if you spend all your time and your energy and your resources and your money doing something you don't really like, you're, you're sacrificing what you could have done instead. So like if you make a decision, let's say it's decision A or decision B, let's say you made decision A. Well, what you're really doing is you're saying you're not doing decision, decision B. And if you know decision B is what you want to be doing, then you're sacrificing what you're currently doing for what you could have done. And in a lot of situations, it's better to just say, you know what, call this, call this decision a loss, make another decision, and let's go over to do the thing that we actually want to do. Um, so that's the second thing. The third thing is optimizing for a mix of both, and there are going to be some trade-offs, and I think this is going to be the most applicable answer and the most actionable answer that I can recommend to people is you're going to have kind of a mix of both. You're going to be optimizing for making money and growing your career and advancing, 
And you're going to be also optimizing for the things you are interested in, but it's not going to be perfect. So neither of them are going to be perfect, are going to be perfect. You're not going to be making exactly what you want to be making, but, and you're also not going to be doing exactly what you want to be doing, but they're going to be pretty close. There are going to be some trade-offs. So what you want to do is use your background and you want to go through, and I would recommend creating an action plan. There's another video on my channel called the action plan. Go through that video and, and use that as a tool and go through an imperfect but better door. Again, remembering opportunity cost. It's gonna be better than where you're currently at. It may not be exact, but it'll be like a stepping stone. And so here are some adjacent fields in robotics from software. I kind of categorize them into kind of my view of where I see things falling. So these are gonna be closer to software, but they're not software. And if you have a mechanical or you have a electrical or a robotics background, but not a formal software background, you, could, you can more than likely get into test engineering, so that could be verification and validation, quality assurance. So for example, a job title might be software engineering, but it's in test. Uh, another one would be like quality engineering, where they're running um, you know, quality protocols and they're testing against requirements. So it's gonna be a lot closer to software, but you're not a software engineer. Um, so that could be a move. Um, some more hands-on, custom, like customer-facing type roles. A lot of mechanical engineers, when they come to me, they say they want to get into software because they want to be more hands-on with the thing. And so I usually recommend a really good door to go through if you're feeling like that is going into field engineering, deployment engineering, or application engineering, because you're actually going to be getting to use software and hardware, and you're going to be doing integration work. So that means you're gonna be able to leverage your, your hardware background, which you already have. You probably do have some software experience. And if you don't, hop into the boot camp, go through our projects, build out your portfolio. You'll pick up the software experience that you need to be you know, competent enough to get these types of jobs. And then you'll be able to kind of blend the two. So this is gonna give you a lot more leverage than maybe just a pure software related role because you'll be able to bring in some of your hardware background. And then if you're interested in more process focused work, we tell people to check out manufacturing, check out project process and product engineering. Um, there are a lot of opportunities within these fields, especially if you're a really strong mechanical engineer, you can more than likely get into manufacturing, learn like operations and design for manufacturing and make that move over there. Now, is that more software? No, but it is more hands-on and so, I think Carlos mentioned that you know it doesn't have to be software, but here are a couple other options. And then obviously project, process, and product. These are gonna be um, dependent on the company that you're at and the work that you're doing, but they're gonna be definitely more interdisciplinary than just sitting in CAD all day long. Um, and there are others, this isn't a complete list, but I wanted to give you kind of an actionable takeaway from this video. So here's the process. You're gonna pick one of these adjacent doors and you can explore all these different options. And then what you want to do is you want to pair that with a company that has interesting products, okay? So make sure that you're choosing a company where you, you like what they're doing. So like in robotics, maybe it's a, a drone company or a humanoid company or, or somebody that has something interesting that you're excited about. Or you could go aerospace, you could go automotive. So pick the adjacent door. So let's say you want to do uh, deployment engineering for a robotics company. Okay, cool. You want to apply for those types of roles, use our process from the masterclass to figure out, to find the roles, to apply for the roles and go pursue them, get the job, get experience there. And then eventually you'll find opportunities or windows where you can move laterally or you can move vertically. So laterally would be moving, let's say from application or deployment into let's say test or into test for software. And then eventually test, maybe you can move into actual software just by moving across the, the company or vertically, you might get into uh, deployment engineering, like our example, and you decide you wanna be the deployment engineering manager and you just move up that vertical over time. And then rinse and repeat this and you've got yourself a nice little you know, napkin math you know, career plan that you can execute over the next five, 10, 15, 20 years of your career and uh, use this kind of as, your, as your, guiding, your guiding mechanism. So that is all I have for this video. If you want the full masterclass, there is a link to that masterclass. It's three hours long. It covers everything you need to know about getting a career in robotics. We do have a few seats left in the robotics boot camp for this session. So check that out as well if you'd like to join us. And thank you to Carlos for the question. Carlos, hope this helps you out and excited to see your progress in your career. See you next time, guys.